as we pay homage to the original South African Bucky, I mean the likes of the Champ, the Utility and even the NP200, we have been on a quest to find the most unique Buckies that have been built at home by a lot of South Africans. And it brings us here to RS Autosport. We know them as the Porsche specialists, right? And now, guess what I've just stumbled upon? They have a 928 with a load bin. Now, just for context, this is what a real or a normal 928 looks like. And this is what they've decided to do. <sighs> my heart, my heart is not dealing quite well with this. I have, to, I have to find the answers for this. I've got questions. Let me call in somebody from RS. Niku, how are you? Very well and you, thanks. I'm, I'm good. I, I, I don't know if I'm good, actually. Tell me, why did you do this to such a beautiful car? Best PR stunt as a company we could have done. Aha! Is so. doing this to a 928. Dream, search, drive. Cars.coza. Keep your adventure alive, because when it comes to finding the right part at the right price, there's just no place like Midas for the love of cars. Okay, so take me through the process. What gives you guys the idea that it's worth cutting up a 928? How does it start? Well, when Anton bought the company, there was a customer that owed money to the company and the car was standing there as storage for quite a while. He struck a deal then to take the car over. Cut our losses? Yes. And now you've got a car that is part of the company from the get-go. Yes, so and there the customer cut his losses and then we cut his car. <laughs> you come in and you say it'll be a great idea to cut it? Yes, we had a look at some of the vehicles in the Netherlands yeah. where they literally already have cut 928s up because the import duties are a lot less on commercial vehicles. You see South Africans making a plan. So eh? we thought, <laughs> no, let's do the same to this. Oh my goodness, and uh, please tell me, don't tell me that you put oils and tires and engines and pieces of spares in this car. Please tell me you don't do that. That's why we built it. Oh my goodness. It's rubberized. It's like any normal bucket. It's just, it's a quarter ton, okay. not a half ton. And, and what does it drive like? Is it, uh, is it e economical to use? Can you run up and down to the shop with it? Do you go and collect spares with it? How often do you use it? Is this the, the, the main mascot that runs around for RS Auto? No, not on a daily basis. If a petrol station had AA meetings, we'd be permanently there. <laughs> She's not light on juice. And when you're driving it, does it does it give you a bit of action at the back? Yes, because we took quite a bit of weight out the back and being manual. So then she is a bit tail happy. Now take me through the process in terms of making, fabricating this and then rubberizing it and then doing the tonneau cover and even this middle bar thing to keep the tonneau cover upright. Mm. What was the process like? How long did it take you? I would say probably this took, the actual cutting up didn't take that long. It was more creating this bulkhead and closing the inside from the load bin. That was where most of our time went. Otherwise, everything else was straightforward. We took it to a company that does tornos for buckies, they did this. We took it to a rubberizing company, they rubberized the load bin. So it wasn't that intense, it was just labor. And, and the build took you what, a, a month, two months, three months? How no, long we've probably point? got about four months in this. Four months and you built this. Mm. Have you seen any others around? Is there anyone you know? There is this? one other one down in Durban. That's oh. also been- 928? Yes, exactly the same. That's also been turned into a bucket. Was it inspired by you guys? No, he actually, we went down to Cars in the Park in Peter Maritzburg and yeah. the guy came up to me and he said, listen, I've also got one, he showed pictures. He started, but it wasn't finished yet. So you did but do a bit of same, inspiration. Yeah, same process that we followed. And what sort of adventures do you get up to in a car like this? You spoke about going to a rally with this as well, because of course it's the company mascot. No, of course, we stuck it full of stickers and then went on a classic car rally. And it was a lot of fun. I we actually came 16th wow. in the whole rally and we just buggered around. Now, Niku, I'm still blown away at how you did this part of the car versus the other 928. There was some extensive welding that had to take place here, seriously. Quite a bit of welding, but the actual design lends itself to becoming a bucky. So everything wait, just... Come, come show me here. No, no. Let's lay it towards it. So, so, so this part here... Yeah, minus the wing. Minus the wing, yeah. Yes. 
this bottom part of the tailgate, we literally took the whole tailgate off, cut this piece oh, off to keep that, oh. to keep the flow with the bumper. Okay, then, then joined it on yes, the bumper. Yes, we joined welded. that piece, made a bridge here, this whole pillar was cut out, and then it's just removing this glass and turning this into the side of the bucky. The slope's already there. And then what do you do on the inside in terms of the little seats that are at the back? Okay, that was, like I said, the most challenging part of it. Because now to create a fully weatherproof and waterproof bulkhead between the interior and the exterior, that was the most difficult piece to create. But you but, fabricated it. Yeah, no, that we work. fabricated and we welded in sections just to close it up. <laughs> I can't believe this. Man, this is so interesting. I can't. I honestly can't. First of all, I would never do that to a 928, specifically because it's got the tombstone seats. And those are a fan favorite of mine, the seats. Now, take me through why you decided to go for a more sportier um, seat setup in that one. There we were forced to because of ergonomics. The tombstone seats were just too wide. Now with a new bulkhead in the rear window, there's not enough leg room for tall guys when they needed to drive the bucky. So a narrow or a much narrower racing seat allowed us to go much further back and we were able to drop them. Man, this is amazing. You know what we need to get into? Let's get into the engine. I want to okay. see what's going Let me on there. Let show you. Let's, let's, let's see what's going on here. I know it's a V8, but I mean, the fact that it's a bucky. <laughs> No, so here we go, four and a half <laughs> litre V8. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this stabiliser, is that uh, factory? This is how it came off the showroom floor. No, Apart you Apart from the bit of powder coating and no, there's the red here yeah, and there, yes. yes. But obviously well changed. maintained because it's a RS Autosport yes, car. Yes, of course. And uh, this doesn't make sense to me. I mean, such a big engine for such a small car. I mean, that means the performance of a 928 is second to none. It must be amazing. Even though no, it's a car are. from the 80s. Yes. Man, this is amazing. This really is amazing. I, now, the best thing about this car is this engine with the dogleg five-speed gearbox. Being a manual changes the whole dynamics instead of being automatic. So it's not the kind of car you enjoy driving in the rain, I can imagine. Not at all. Not with the weight we took out the back. That's, that's my point. That's the, that's the thinking. Did you guys ever think that the weight, the weight, uh, what, what, what could I say? The, the releasing of weight at the back would anyway affect the performance of the car? Or was it just like, we're having fun anyway? That was the whole point. It makes it more fun being manual with no weight at the back, no traction, no ABS and no traction control. Oh man, this is gonna be fun. I think we need to drive now. Please, let's go. Wish me luck. Ah. Officer's permission, so definitely. Yes, let's do it. You'll coach me through all of this. <laughs> I've actually never driven a 928 before. Wow. So, the first way to uh, pop your cherry, do it in a 928 bucket. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so driver's seat of the 928. Oh, I can already feel all the acceleration that, hey, this thing's got power. It's an easy smile. Thanks. Bro. This thing is just about getting, once you get, you, if you've driven it a while and you get used to the shifts and yeah. you can keep in the power, it's <laughs> so predictable. <laughs> 
because you're well accustomed to it. Yeah. Now you know. You know what it's. No, but it's not are. twitchy. It's not. It doesn't do unexpected stuff. Oh. And how reliable are these cars? Just in terms of general reliability. It's like any classic old car. If you can find a well-maintained example that hasn't been abused, they're pretty reliable. This thing hasn't really given us any major issues. Okay. It's been service items and small stuff. Solid car all around. Oh. You've changed my mind on 928. You really have. Oh man, it's been a fantastic day out in the Highfelt driving a very unique Porsche 928 Bucky. You know what this tells me? A lot of South Africans, we are resourceful. I mean, there was no firewall for this car ever made or even at last, but they made a plan. I gotta give a shout out to RS Auto, man. Just to think about taking a normal 928 and making it a Bucky just to run errands with, I think that's so cool. Bring your Corsa Utility, bring your Caddy Bucky, bring your NP200, bring your Nissan Champ 14 Clipper. None of them match up to something like this. And again, if a manufacturer doesn't make it anymore, ha, we can build it and we'll make it very cool with a V8 and 19 inch wheels. Ah, Niku, thank you, man. Thank you, that was so cool. How many cases of beer do you think will fit in here? Maybe one, two, three, four, maybe six. Am I correct? Let's go find out. Let's go find out. I think that's a plan. Come, let's go. So you thing. drive, let's go. <laughs> Cars.coza. Are you busy trying to decide between two cars, three cars, four cars, five cars, six cars? We have an excellent compare tool on our site which will help you make sense of all the different pricing and all the different specs. You'll find it on our main site as well as in our app. It's super slick, it's easy to use, it's highly detailed, it's constantly updated with the latest information and pricing and I can guarantee you it'll make your life a ton easier. Check it out on our website, link in the description below. Keep your adventure alive, because when it comes to finding the right part at the right price, there's just no place like Midas for the love of cars.